Hey guys, it's Species Sims, and we are back with more Mystic Destinies, and we are continuing Tatsuya's epilogue. So we are on Chapter 2, Aftermath. The first thing I notice when I open my eyes is my throbbing headache. My body seems to be aching all over, in fact. I stare up at the ceiling, confused. What happened? I feel something in my hand and see that a hand is holding mine. I turn to see Tatsuya. Inara? Are you okay? How are you feeling? Honestly, I feel a little fuzzy. What happened? I try and think back and suddenly feel much more awake. I sit up fast, ignoring the pain. Kay, it's, it's them! They're back! Inara, lie down. You're hurt. Tatsuya presses a hand on my shoulder, gently, but firmly, and I'm forced to lie back. It's then that I realize that his hand doesn't feel cold like usual. In fact, it feels pretty warm. How long have I been... How did I get here? When did you... When did you get here? Taku brought you here. Emmy went looking for you when you didn't show up and found you unconscious. She couldn't reach me, so she called Taku. Where are they now? I told Emmy to wait at home because she was too upset. Taku went off to look for the person that did this to you. Emmy said you were the only one down there when she found you. I see... I'm actually really relieved that the mage probably isn't dead, but at the same time, I'm scared too. Tatsuya seems to sense this because he takes my hand in both of his. Was it the mage society again? I'm so, so sorry I wasn't there to protect you. Don't be ridiculous. How could you always be there? And yeah, it was definitely them. How did you know? Katsunosuke is supposed to be keeping them off your back, but clearly he's not doing a good job. I'll call him later and figure out what the hell is go what the hell he's doing. But for now, I want to stay by your side. Mother will be here soon. I would have called her sooner, but I just... The door opens, cutting Tatsuya off mid-sentence. In strides his mother, looking worried as ever. Inara, are you alright? Chisaki motions for Tatsuya to move. And he reluctantly vacates the seat and stands up. She sits in the chair instead and places a cool hand on my head. Chisaki closes her eyes and I lie there, confused. Tatsuya starts explaining to me. Mother's going to check over your injuries. I never knew she was a healer. Yes, she's one of the few ice dragons that learned how to. I hear the hint of pride in Tatsuya's voice and smile. You took a pretty hard hit to the head. It looks like a concussion. But other than some scrapes, you don't have any broken bones or other serious injuries. Even though she had a fall from that height? It seems so. I wonder. What is it, Tatsuya? Do you remember that time we argued and you ran out of the car? I do. I'm still not exactly sure what happened that day. But I wasn't the one to save you. What do you mean? I remember you touching me and then I woke up at your family's home. You pulled me out of the way, right? Sort of. The truth is, I wasn't fast enough to save you. Time seemed to stop. It was like everything in the world had stopped except for us. What? I can't really explain what happened, but it felt... But I felt it... An extremely powerful foreign magic like I've never felt before. I was so stunned at first that I didn't realize what was happening. But then I pulled you out of the way. The moment I did, you passed out and the effect wore off. I'm almost certain you were the one who saved yourself. Tatsuya lowers his voice to a whisper. In the end, I was useless. You could have been killed because of me. Sometimes I think... Okay. Chisaki soy... F oh, that was... Chisaki, sorry. Chisaki's soft voice interrupts him, and she puts a hand on his shoulder. Tatsuya stops talking and looks at her for a moment before nodding. We can talk about this later. It's enough for me that you're alright for now. Inara, I'm going to try to heal you now. I should be able to stop the swelling and the pain, but I can't do anything about any other symptoms, like being disoriented. I'm sorry. Sorry, thirsty. It's all right, Miss Yukimura. I'm still not even used to the convenience of healing as it is. I relax and let Chisaki place her soothing hands on my head. A cold sensation, much like the feeling of menthol, spreads over my head and soon my entire body. The feeling is intense, but it's also very comforting. I glance at Tatsuya, who still looks so sad for some reason. I'm okay, Kay, really, so don't be sad. I don't even realize it when my eyes slowly drift close.
I opened my eyes, feeling fully rested and aware, unlike the last time I was awake. I looked down at my clothes, surprised to see some familiar pajamas. Uh, I'm not sure if it's more embarrassing to think Tatsuya did or his mother. Unfortunately for me, it seems to be nighttime. Tatsuya's sleeping in his chair, half lying on the bed. Did he really stay here all night for me? I assess my body and come to the conclusion that I feel pretty good. Mrs. Yukimura's healing must have done a great job. I feel almost totally fine, not even tired. Then I look down at my watch and see the date. What? It's Thursday? That means I slept for two days. Well, no wonder why you feel good. Missed engagements and shirked, off, shirked obligations flood into my mind, making me extremely anxious. Oh no, this won't help. Whatever I missed, it's already over with. Besides, Kay might have covered for me. In fact, he probably did. I trust him. Instead of freaking out, I managed to slip out of bed and go to the bathroom without waking Tatsuya. Or so I thought. When I walk into the room, I nearly jump when I see Kay sitting straight up. He looks groggy, though, and I don't think he completely knows what woke him. Till his blue eyes settle on me. Inara? Inara! Before I can even comprehend what's happening, Tatsuya is upon me, literally pulling me up in a hug. My feet dangle a little above the ground, and I think he's about to squeeze the life out of me. When I cough from the, const the constriction, he pulls back to look at me, loosening his hold. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just so happy to see you awake. Is he crying? Kate. I let him hold me as long as he wants to, feeling inexplicably guilty at being unconscious for so long. He must have been so worried. After it seems like forever, and yet not long enough, Tatsuya puts me down and shyly wipes his tears away. Tatsuya, were you... did you stay here with me all this time? Yeah. I couldn't leave. Everyone tried to make me. Well, except Takumi. He said he'd watch over you for me, but... I missed you so much, and even though Mother said you'd be fine... You slept so long, so I was so worried. I wanted to see you as soon as I could, and I just couldn't let him be the one you woke up to see first. I see. Knowing how hard it is for Tatsuya to be so honest about his feelings, this torrent of words feels special coming from him. My chest feels tight in the best way, and I can't help but give him another hug. He wraps his arms gently around me. Nara, I am so sorry I wasn't there for you. I always keep my phone turned off at lessons, so I didn't even get Emmy or Taku's call for a while. I feel terrible about it. I've even started having nightmares again. I pull back and look up at him. Again? Yeah, I used to have them sometimes after you were almost hit by that car. I kept thinking, why wasn't I fast enough? What if you had been killed because of me? I started having those same thoughts all over again. You are so precious to me. I don't want to live in a world where you aren't. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. I lean back into Kay's shoulder, finally understanding a bit of what he's been going through. So there's still so much he doesn't open up... There's still so much he doesn't open up to me about. It makes me sad, but this means he's beginning to, right? Tatsuya. No, oh, Kay. I don't blame you for any of that. The card thing was my own fault. I was being stupid. And you did save me. If you hadn't been there, I would have been hit anyway. And this thing with the mage, what could you do about that? You can't be, be with me every waking moment. Maybe not, but this only happened because of your involvement with our clan. And Katsu is supposed to be making sure this doesn't happen. I've called him back into town. Now that you're awake, we'll go see him tomorrow. If you're feeling up to it, that is. I'm sorry, it's not that I don't just trust Taku to protect you if something happens again. It's just, it's unreasonable, but I want to do it myself. I know I can do it myself. All of this power was never of any real use to me, but finally, if it can protect you, then I'm so glad I have it. Tetsuya. You're spoiling... You're spoiling, you know, telling me all this? My fingers tighten, bunching up his shirt under them. I... like it. Oh. I reach up to lightly kiss Tatsuya's jawline, but the moment my lips touch his skin, he pulls away. Tatsuya? Um, why don't we go to sleep for tonight? Mother said you need your rest. But I'm not tired. I feel fine. Well, I am, so... Oh, sorry, I'm being selfish. Tatsuya shakes his head and starts to lie down on the bed. I look away, feeling frustrated with myself. 
But before I can do much thinking, I feel arms around my waist and the world goes sideways as I'm pulled down. I turn my face to look at Tatsuya in the dim light. Kay, if you can't sleep, you should at least lie down. And I need to sleep and watch over you. And there's only one bed. So this is the only logical choice. Right, that makes sense. I think it's so funny they've been dating for two years. Like, I think it's okay if you sleep in the same bed. I turn around and snuggle back into Tatsuya's strong embrace, feeling safe and secure. For a while, I just listened to his ever slow, slowing, soft breathing behind me. So he's been that worried about me. But I wish he didn't have nightmares. It really was my own fault. Still, I feel so loved. Despite my protests of not being tired, I easily drop off into sleep, lulled by the comforting feeling of Tatsuya holding on to me. The next day, we visit the Ryu compound that has become another home to me. With the exception of some fading bruises and cuts, I seem to be completely back to normal. We're sitting on the floor in one of the inner rooms, waiting for Katsunosuke to come in so we can have our meeting with him. I look at Tatsuya while we wait. Was Katsu mad about being called back here? Actually, no. It was interesting. He seemed furious that one of the, the society had attacked you. I can't say if it's out of concern for you or his own hurt pride, though. I'm sure it was at least some of the latter. Katsunosuke still works on behalf of the Ryu clan, but instead of demoting him or ex exiling him, Tatsuya has opted to use him. Katsu now spends his time traveling around the world, improving clan relations with other dragon clans. He also looks for leads to globally expand the Ryu's businesses where he can. This coming from the guy that was going to kill Tatsuya if he won, and we're like, nah, we'll use you. In the end, it turned out to be a perfect job for both of them, as Tatsuya doesn't have to look at Katsu and vice versa. And Katsu is actually good at his job and seems to enjoy it. I patiently sip my tea as we wait for Katsu. How long has it been this time? Like three months or so? I try not to pay attention. It never seems long enough. Subconsciously ignoring Kay's us unusual, uh, usual venom, I think back. Hmm, I think it's been probably since the Summer Solstice Festival back in June. Does it really matter? And why did you want to go to that anyway? Well, because he invited me and it sounded fun. I don't really get a chance to learn about water dragon culture. And it should stay that way. Are you that excited to see him again? I finally look at Tatsuya and realize that he's getting jealous again. Honestly, it's never stopped even after we committed to each other, and while sometimes it's cute, most times it's tiresome. Look, you trust me, right? So why do you care so much? It's that snake I don't trust. And I don't want to think of him getting to enjoy your company like I do. Okay. The paper doors slide open so fast that I think, I, I think it might catch fire. Tatsuya and I turn to look at the newcomer. Okay, Inara. Father, do you really have to be so rough with the door? Haruki inspects the door for damage. I think it'll be all right, dear. Chisaki puts a hand to her chest and sighs. That's great. Last time we had to call in professionals to repair it. Such a fragile house is unfit for dragons. Besides, I was excited to see my two favorite grandchildren. Nothing wrong with that, is there? Daichi pulls me up into an unexpected hug and gives me a bone-crushing squeeze. Tatsuya saves me, though, by standing up and parting in between us. It's good to see you, Grandfather, but, um, why are you all here? Have you already forgotten? Who's the old man now? This weekend is our visit. Is ours to visit. Already? I must have gotten the dates mixed up. From this exchange, I gather that Kay hasn't told anyone other than his mother about what happened to me. Their eyes meet, and she gives a slight nod. Tatsuya turns to his grandfather. Grandfather, I'll need this room for Ryu clan business shortly. There's been an, a piercing wail that makes my blood run cold echoes in the distance, making Tatsuya stop mid-sentence. That can't be. The sound of distant, small, repetitive explosions reach my ears, and the Yukamoras all stare at each other. Wait here, everyone. Tatsuya turns around to speed off, but I grab his wrist as tight as I can. No, I'm coming with you. We stare into each other's eyes for a few moments while the Yukamoras watch with bated breath. K. Why do you insist on treating your woman like some sort of wilting flower? She'll never become a warrior if you coddle her. What? I... Finally, Tatsuya nods. You'll be safer with me anyway. Just stay by my side. I nod in agreement, feeling strangely happy at his words as we run out of the room. Pardon me! That's extremely loud. That is my phone. Oh my god. Okay. Hold on. Just a second. Mm. 
sorry. <laughs> that was a, sorry, pardon me. Anyway, I didn't I normally try not to text while I'm recording games, but I just kind of I needed to respond to that, so. Um uh, Okay. I nod in agreement, feeling strangely happy at his words as we run out of the room. <laughs> it's so loud. It's on the quietest setting. And it's like brain shatteringly loud. We follow the loud, thunderous sounds to the throne room. I inhale when I fully comprehend the situation. On one side of the room are two hooded mages, and on the other side of the floor is a crumpled Katsunosuke. Katsu! Even as I yell, Tatsuya transforms into a, in a brilliant burst of light. He dashes towards the mages, pulling out the hilt of his sword at the same time he summons the Blade of Ice. I follow suit and grab my crystal. Before Tatsuya can even reach the mages, one of them lifts a hand. Hot magma spurts out of the ground, stopping him in his tracks. I run to Katsu, having no choice but to trust in Tatsuya. I bend down to him and see that he's still conscious, disor just disoriented. Katsu, are you alright? Do I look alright? Katsu spits out some blood as if for emphasis, and my eyes widen. Where are you hurt? Unless you can quickly do anything about internal bleeding, I wouldn't worry about it right now. Seems your pal, the acoustic, wanted to come back and visit you. One of the mages opens his mouth and lets out a mighty yell. It's a deep sound that grows louder as it comes toward us. So loud that I have to cover my ears. Katsu lifts a hand and shoots a torrent of water at the mage, forcing the sound... The force of the sound cuts through the water and hits me anyway. I wince at the pain, but I know the hit could have been much worse if not for Katsu. Tatsuya takes the opportunity to slash the sonic kinetic mage with a sword, but his fire accomplice sends a wave of hot lava at Tatsuya. K! In a split-second decision, I try something new. I spin around and set a wave of water right after the rolling lava with all my power. The wave becomes as great as a tidal wave and crashes over the magma, instantly cooling it before it can reach Tatsuya. Unfortunately, it's so lar that the large that the wave itself is a threat to Tatsuya. Tatsuya sees it's coming and throws out a hand, crystallizing the wave beautifully. This gives the acoustic mage enough time to send another invisible wave of vibrations through his hands at Tatsuya. He takes it head on, but I can see the pain shudder through his body. Nice work, Inara. I look down at the sound of Katsu's voice, but he suddenly leaps up. With a giant whirling kick I didn't know he was capable of, he sends an even larger wave of water than I did at both mages. Taking a page from his book, I try the same thing, whirling around and throwing my arms out instead. The water I summon follows his and mixes with it. The mages prepare to counterattack before it can hit them, but Tatsuya is ready. The moment they're distracted, he slashes with his katana at one. The mage moves back, but stumbles into the other. Katsu and its wave, and I, Katsu and I's wave, crashes over both of them at the same time, drowning up their yells as Tatsuya makes a leap into the air. He manages to avoid the wave altogether before landing back down. I walk toward the mages with one hand out, starting to freeze the liquid around the mages. Tatsuya gets the gist and follows suit. Together, we slowly encase them in ice leaving only a little room to breathe for them. Nice job. I smile at Tatsuya before remembering something I forgot. I rush over to Katsu to assess his injuries. I gently put my hands on his stomach and close my eyes. Thankfully, they don't seem as bad as I'd feared. Katsu looks down at me with his ever-present amusement dancing in his eyes. So quick to check on my well-being. A far cry from the girl who looked about to pass out two years ago. Well, this isn't nearly as bad as that, and I've had some practice. Tatsuya walks up to Katsu, his voice thick with restrained anger. The hell is this all about? Kasima. Kazima. What is this all about? It must have been important for you to be attacked over here. Oh, you can bet on it. I was able to fully confirm that the Mage Society indeed has a vendetta against the Ryu. And they won't rest until we've fallen. Ooh, that's the end of the fucking chapter. You gotta be shitting me. All right, well, I guess we're going to find out what happens in the next part. So, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.